and welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. And welcome to the weekly gardening vlog. Today is going to be quite a big project. I have a ton of stuff going on today. As you can see behind me, we have this here huge tunnel, uh, cattle panel, trellis tunnel thing, and we are gonna be planting the majority of that today. We also have this whole patch here of the ground cover and we're going to replant all of the missing ones here and we also have a patch of it over there two different patches and we have to trellis our tomatoes over there with the cattle panels that we planted there uh, last week so it is the morning here now it's still relatively cool it's supposed to be a really scorcher of a day today at least you know for our area and so my plan is just to kind of prep the ground, burn the holes in the cloth that I need burn, and um, and then, you know, prep the ground and do all those sorts of things, do whatever I can, and that's not actually planting before the sun really starts to get pretty hot, then I'm gonna go inside for a while, and then this evening when it starts to actually cool off, I'm gonna come back and actually plant all of these plants. And so we're just gonna go ahead and bust this thing out. I wanna show you a couple of things that I think were, a, I don't wanna say, well, kind of, one of them is definitely a game changer and the other one we're gonna see if it will help me to be able to plant my starts a little bit earlier into the ground um, and hopefully be able to stave off some of the slugs so the first thing where did I even put oh <laughs> they're over there hold on the main issue that I have with my starts and the reason that this thing is not completely planted because I planted all of these uh, is slugs uh, we have a huge slug issue around here and it's just it gets better kind of as the season goes on because I'm out here and I'm squishing them and cutting them and getting rid of them. But especially in the beginning of the season when all of my starts are so young and tender, they eat them. So my plan is once I start, once I put them in the ground, I picked up these. They're like solo cups, but they're clear. And so my plan with this is uh, with some of the smaller starts that do not have their kind of spiky kind of texture to them yet. I'm going to cover them with this overnight and hopefully that will help give them some protection overnight and I'll come by and take it off during the day. So, because uh, it's really hot here. Well, I mean, it's really hot for here. And then the next thing, so that's an experiment. I don't actually know if that's going to work. The next thing that I do know is a game changer is this thing. It is a giant auger. It is in combination with this beast here. Oh my gosh, it saves so much time planting in the ground. When I was planting these, it took forever and I didn't even really get it very dug in very well. And then last week, when I planted all the tomatoes over there in the ground, I just used this thing and it, I got down like a foot deep in like a half a second. Like I couldn't, okay, maybe like a second, but I couldn't even believe how quickly that I was able to plant all of those tomatoes in there and get them very deep and it's in the ground and it's untilled ground. So this is going to help the process go so much easier. And so we just have this ground cover here and the stuff that's here with all the squash in this area here, these holes are already burned. I don't have to worry about it. I just need to plant where the holes are. And, but the other ones we need to plant, we need to, to uh, burn holes in. I've been using this butane torch and I probably will still be using it, but I've also picked up this thing and it is a propane one with a big, huge, big thing. And this one works a lot better. <laughs> uh, this one feels like it might be a little bit more controlled and this one kind of, um, if I hold it upside down for too long, it kind of sputters a little bit. So it does kind of make me nervous. But there's no cautions or anything about holding it upside down. I think I just need to be a little bit more careful about turning it upside down every once in a while. Um, and just kind of, I'm not sure why, but that seems, that seems to help a little bit if I turn it upside down every few plantings. So I am going to just bust through all of this, get everything kind of planted and get it going. I might bring you along for some of it, but there's certainly not for all of it because <laughs> this is going to take me hours to do. And uh, so that takes up a lot of memory on my hard drive. So I'm probably just gonna show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing. And then other than that, I will bring you back this evening for the planting. Well, 
One thing that I should mention here, if you are using this auger in untilled soil, you definitely want to make sure you have a big old beastie um, tool like this. We bought this one a long time ago for our hand operated uh, grain mill. And um, this one is, it, it needed something like super beasty to be able to run it. And so that's the only reason that we have this. I did not buy this tool for this project, but if you, you probably need something this powerful. I tried with my Craftsman, just basic cordless drill and it didn't, it didn't impress me. <laughs> as soon as I switched over to this one, obviously it, it definitely did the trick. I mean, you can get a little bit in the ground, but it's not gonna do it as fast and it's probably gonna overwhelm your, your tool fairly quickly as it did me until I switched to this one. But if you have tilled soil and you're just looking for a quick way to kind of dig some holes in the ground, your regular uh, cordless drill would probably work. It is now the end of my weekend and I was not able to actually bring you guys along for the planting. There wasn't really a whole lot to it so I just kind of plowed through it and I, it's actually the next day. And so I'm gonna kind of just show you everything that we actually got done. Right, so over here, the first thing that I did end up doing, I was able to give kind of a test run of using those clear plastic cups that I was talking about. Uh, it went really well. It kept the, every single one was safe. Everything, every single one uh, survived and did well, except one actually. Uh, but I think that one was not anything to do with these. But anyways, so we can just replant that one. But over here on the trellises, I went ahead and on this far side, I planted three loofahs. And then here we have some Kiku chrysanthemum melons. And you can see that we kind of just have them, I covered them up with these little dome things. And then I just took them off first thing in the morning. So, and I kind of pushed them in a little bit, nothing like totally crazy, but I pushed them in. So hopefully no slugs can kind of get around the cups. And it worked out well. Uh, I'll show you how I did it in the ones that were in the, um, the row covers. So these ones are the, I think it's, what is it, Sacatoss? Sakatos sweet melons. And then you can see the tomatoes are doing well. We had our, we're in the middle of our very first real big heat wave. And it's getting up later on in the week. It's supposed to be 95, which is really hot for our area. And it's been a, a, a while. Like we hardly had any days that, that were that high. And so we need to come through and water some of these. They're starting to look a little bit stressed, but nothing too crazy. And then I went ahead, I did actually water the peas. These things are getting so tall, they're starting to fall over. <laughs> so I think next time I'm definitely gonna do a taller trellis. And then over here, if you remember, I had the, um, in the just in this, this front row here, I had um, a bunch of beans planted in the front side there. And then I had planted some beets in the center here. And really any rational human being would think that would understand that that would be way too crowded, but not me. So I went ahead today and I actually plucked a bunch of them. And so it's much thinner. I'm gonna let the ones that are left kind of grow just a little bit or just pick them in a few days. And I just fried up all the greens and then I have the uh, the beets I'm gonna go ahead and grill up as well. Well, not grill up, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook them. And then here, these are the Zucchino Rampicantes. One was here that was survived, but it just, it didn't grow. And so I went ahead and gave it the same treatment that I gave these ones. I watered it and I'm covering it. Hopefully that will help it to grow. And then, so you can see here, there's not a whole lot of beads left. But anyway, so these things definitely need, um, need some watering, but they're doing great. And then here we have Kajari melons, three of these, those. And then on the other side, our Armenian yard long, and then another Armenian yard long on that side. These are not Armenian yard long. <laughs> These ones are Tigger melons and Armenian yard longs on the other side. I had previously planted Armenian yard long. And you can also see all of 
these um, cabbages are freaking huge. I mean, for real, like these things are gargantuan, humongous. And a lot of them are definitely starting to put on heads and they're just beautiful. I'm so excited. But yeah, there's, this whole patch here is just doing fantastic. And then this one obviously is not, but we have the replacements here started. You can see there's a couple broccoli there and then these are all kind of broccoli and cauliflower. And so you can see over here, we did have a bunch of potatoes here that Robert had planted from seed. And so um, finally just gave up on those ones. All the other ones are doing fantastic. I mean, these things are huge, 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 huge. And they're starting to flower on the other side over there. Um, so the experiment of the potatoes, at least as far as we're concerned on this one, kind of failed. It didn't really work very well. But all the other potatoes are doing great. We ended up planting 11 more tomatoes in here, kind of spaced out, and we're just gonna trellis them up, well, with um, just some bamboo sticks. And then over here, you can kind of see what I have going on here. These ones are summer squash, and they're planted three feet apart, three feet this way, in the rows and then they're four feet apart this way and so i just haven't had them covered up i just covered these up um so they are they're ready to go to sleep basically and then here i last week i think i showed you but i planted four rows of these tomatoes here actually i don't think i showed you i think it was on my extra two days off that i hadn't filmed um so you can see we got all these tomatoes planted and I ended up throwing out all the extra, not all, but any of the extra tomatoes that were just not doing very well. And then yesterday, Robert was awesome, came out here and helped me, and we got these trellises up. We did, basically just planted um, eight, nine per trellis. Yeah, nine per trellis. I think that's what I did. And then I just kept a few extra of the better tomato plants, uh, two flats of them, for replacements if need be. And then, just now, I just wrapped up planting all of these. You can see it looks kind of funny. <laughs> but it worked out really well on uh, the ones I did yesterday. So I figured I'd go with it. And there we go. And then some of them, I didn't do it to all didn't cover. Oops, I forgot. I missed that one. I need to get that. Okay, so you can see I have this hole kind of this hole burned in the plastic and basically all I did is I kind of put it in there and wrapped it underneath the plastic and then it worked out well because I did end up burning the, the holes are a bit large enough to do that with but up here on the top I did all butternut and then here I did kind of a mixture of like delicata and some acorn and um, what else kabucha and then on the center row here, I did what I call more of the medium-sized ones. I got some spaghetti squash here. There's a few that are obviously just, they were too large when I planted to be able to come, to realistically be able to cover them. So I didn't. There's some Tokyo Blue and some Lakota and just some of the more medium-sized squash. And then down here, I planted the larger squashes that I had, which I didn't only had like six of them, five of them, I think. And then the rest I just filled in with um, some summer squash. So it'll take up a little more room. I kind of spread it out to give it a little bit more space between the vining ones and the ones that, um, the summer squash. So, yeah. And then over here, you can see these things are just going to town. I love these things. This is just going to be like, it's going to be like a zucchini that's like a circle. It's pretty cute. And so you can see, I mean, these things are just going gangbusters. This one's a different type, but it's also a circle. And the darn slug is about to die. I'm surprised. That's the first time I've seen a slug on a grown squash. At least that I've noticed. And then over here, we have some gray zucchini. Those things are going crazy too. This one doesn't have anything yet. Some summer squash. Some of the golden one. And then up here... Up here, these ones are going crazy too. Just a whole bunch. And I did get all of the holes dug and um, all the holes burned and dug here. 
And so basically my plan is I have the holes roughly every foot. It's not exact. I didn't measure, but I know that these, each of these are four feet apart. So I kind of just use those as the gauge. Every other hole I'm going to plant as a melon. And then in between each of those, I'm going to do like a cucumber or like a, um, like I said, it would still be a cucumber, but like Armenian yard long, zucchino, rampicante, stuff like that. I'm going to do those alternating. So hopefully that, I, I think if I, we all know that that's not enough spacing, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm hoping that since I have such a big, long, tall trellis, I'm hoping that that will help it to be able to do well. And I'm probably wrong, but I'm still going to do it anyway. So in here, we have definitely dwindled down the population of the greenhouse here. If you remember from last week, it was busting at the seams. So I came in here last night and that's why I didn't end up getting a whole lot done or filmed last night. And I just had them all separated out. We have, these are the loofahs, zucchino rampicantes and Armenian yard longs. I call these like the big, the big cucumbers. And then these are the little cucumbers. And then here we have some summer squash and here are melons, melons, and melons. Lettuce, lettuce and chard, and some, some kale. Those things are good, get, just getting going. And then I have some beets that I planted two weeks ago, I want to say. These things are just get, are starting to go. I only planted two per cell, so not quite as densely as the other one. And then over here we have the leftover orange butternut some more summer squash, cucumbers, melons that are kind they're starting to recover, but they definitely got hit pretty hard. But most of them, most of them are recovering. Not all of them are. And then over here is just, this one's terrible. Something definitely got this tray. So there's just a couple. There's a market more and the loofahs are doing okay. And then one over there that's doing kind of okay. We got basil going here. I haven't had a chance to upload those yet. And then there's not much change from down there, so I'm not really gonna I'm not really gonna show you what's down there. Uh, we pretty much just have the African daisy and the Prince Zulu daisy. Those are the only two that are really blooming, um, and they're not really blooming right now because it's dark or getting dark anyway. So um, really, the only two gardening spaces that I have left to plant are here, and then. I have three rows right over there. And those ones, that's just gonna be leftovers. So that's gonna be just, I'm gonna, whatever squash or melons or things like that that I have left, I'm gonna leave, plant them there and just let them sprawl and kind of just do their thing. That's my plan. And I have a bunch more starts in here where I'm gonna go ahead, I don't think I have a long enough season to be able to really do a much succession planting but I'm definitely going to be keeping some so that I can succession plant if I can. Uh, certainly at least the summer squash. And then I have a lot of summer squash planted. So it's a big part of my kind of like a plant-based type thing that I'm experimenting with for the summer. It's going to be a big source of kind of volume for that. So those are the only two areas that I have left to plant. And those are uh, the starts that I have to do it with. I have more starts going inside. Those ones are... Uh, two flats of flowers, one flat of some more squashes of various kinds, mostly just the smaller ones and the uh, summer squash. And then I also have, what else do I have in there? I can't remember. I think I have some basil, some lettuce, and uh, kale, some of the more colder weather crops. Oh, and I have like three flats of cabbage too. So um, that's kind of my plan with that. I'm hoping to be able to overwinter uh, once uh, these ones are done, I'm going to replace them and hopefully they'll be done in time because I have them growing right now. So they'll hopefully they'll get a right, nice big start before the summer and then we can actually plant them. Um, not before the summer, it is the second day of summer. So <laughs> I bet um, they'll, they'll get a chance to get really big before I put them in the ground. So they have a really big head start when these guys are done. Um, so I can just put them right in the ground and they'll be nice and big. That's kind of my plan. Not huge, but just large enough to where it won't be much much of a, a delay with that. So that is pretty much it for the garden today. It is, I think, I want to say 
the 22nd of June. It's the second day of summer, whatever day that is. And um, so that's the garden here and that's the things that are going on here. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found benefit from it. Maybe some inspiration, maybe some things to do and I'm sure probably some things not to do. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and we'll see you next time. Bye.